How much money should you be risking on each sports bet? Hi, my name is Logan. I'm a student at Harvard studying statistics, astrophysics, and computer science, and I'm here today to talk to you about strategies for optimal bankroll management. Your bankroll is the amount of money that you have spread across all of your sports books, and it's really important that you make smart decisions with this money. If you're too aggressive, you risk burning out and losing a lot of money in a short period of time, and if you're too conservative, you might be missing out on potential profit. When you're placing a bet, there's two important decisions you have to make. First, what are you betting on? And second, and how much are you betting? Today, we're gonna to be talking about how much to bet. The strategy that we use for optimal bankroll management is called Kelly Criterion. This is a statistically proven optimal strategy in order to make you the most money in the long term. In order to understand Kelly Criterion, there's a few important things to consider. Primarily, expected value. If you're new to expected value, don't worry, we got you covered. I'll be explaining the basics of expected value, and then we'll dive into Kelly Criterion so that you know how much money you should be risking on each of your sports bets. So what exactly is expected value? Expected value is an absolutely crucial concept to understand if you're a sports better, but thankfully it's pretty easy to catch on to. Effectively, with expected value, you know your bet is either going to win or it's going to lose. But imagine that bet was played a million times over. It would win sometimes, it would lose other times, and you'd average out to a certain percent return. Maybe if it's a really good bet, you'd get 10% return, or if it's a really bad bet, you'd lose 10%. Sports bettors who are picking randomly or following gut intuitions are going to expect a return of negative four or negative 5% in the long run. On the other hand, good sports bettors who are taking positive expected value plays can flip that narrative and take three, four, or 5% profit on each of their sports bets. So effectively, all expected value does is project how good a bet is. If it's positive, you can expect to make money by taking that bet over and over and over again. If it's negative, you're going to lose money in the long term and you should definitely stay away from that bet. So how do you calculate expected value? The way to calculate expected value is surprisingly simple. All you do is take the chance of something happening times the payout if it happens and add them all together. For example, for a coin flip, say you bet on a coin flip with your friend. There's a 50% chance you win and 50% chance you lose. If you win, you get back what you put down. And if you lose, you lose what you put down. So say you put down a dollar. There's a 50% chance you win that dollar. So we'll do 0.5 times the $1 that you'd win if your bet wins. And there's a 50% chance that you lose your dollar. So 0.5 times one if you lose. So the expected value of betting on a coin flip with your buddy is zero, which means over the long term, you're not going to win money and you're not going to lose money, which follows our intuition. Now let's weight this coin in your favor. Say this coin has a 60% chance to land on heads and you bet on heads. So now there's a 60% chance you win. So 0.6 times the payout of one and there's a 40% chance you lose. So we'll do minus 0.4 times the payout of one. This means that this has a 20% expected value. So over the long term, if you're betting on a coin that's 60% in your favor, you can expect to return 20% profit. Let's dive into this example a little bit more so we can get into Kelly criteria. So as I mentioned earlier, when you're taking a sports bet, you have two really important decisions to make. First, what are you betting on? And second, how much are you betting? From here on forward, we're gonna be making a really important assumption about what you're betting on. And that's that it's positive EV or mathematically profitable. Since we're talking about bankroll management and how much you should bet on each of your wagers, it's really important to keep in mind that if you're taking negative EV bets, the amount that you wanna bet on that is zero. If these bets are going to lose you money in the long term, don't bet on them. It's pretty simple. So in order to actually have a conversation about how much money you should be risking on each bet, we have to make the assumption that you're making good bets or else bet zero dollars. It's that simple. So. As I was talking about earlier, assuming you're taking positive EV bets, it's still really risky to be putting a lot of money on them. If you are too aggressive and place too much money on positive EV bets, you still can get unlucky and you can lose money in the short term. You can lose a lot of money in the short term. Or if you're too conservative and you don't bet enough, you're missing out on profit potential. So I'm just saying these words and they might not mean too much. So I figured it's worth a demonstration. We were talking earlier about a positive EV bet, or if you were betting on a coin flip that's weighted 60% in your favor, you have 20% expected return over the long term. But here, I figured I could demonstrate with this website that actually simulates this exact circumstance that if you're too aggressive or too conservative, you're still going to be losing money or at least not living up to your maximum profit potential if you're either too aggressive or too conservative. 
So I'm gonna run some simulations and I'll get back to you guys with the results. All right, so here we're going to be demonstrating what happens if you're too aggressive as a sports better. We haven't talked about Kelly Criterion yet, um, but just know here I'll be using 2.5 as my Kelly multiplier. That probably doesn't mean much to you, it will later, um, but effectively it's a hyper aggressive sports betting strategy um, and we'll see how it works out. So I'm gonna get into this exercise. It'll be sped up so you guys don't have to watch the whole thing. Um, but yeah, we'll see how it goes. So that's the end of the aggressive betting simulation. Uh, and you guys can see I ended with $16. So I started with 25, ended with 16. Meaning even though I was taking mathematically profitable bets, obviously a coin flip weighted in your favor, we all know that that's mathematically profitable. I lost money. And the reason I lost money is because I was too aggressive with my bankroll management. I started with $25 and that aggressive strategy worked incredibly well for a period of time. I went from $25 to over $2,000. So I made a huge, huge jump to almost 100 times my money, but because I was too aggressive, that money immediately crashed. I had $2,000 and it crashed all the way back down to below where I started and I finished at $16. And that's exactly what can happen to you if you're too aggressive with your bankroll management. You might go on a crazy hot streak and make a lot of money, but if you continue to bet too aggressive, you will very quickly throw all of that profit away and maybe even end below where you started. So this is a cautionary tale. I only ran this simulation once and that's exactly what happened. Huge hot streak, huge cold streak, and I ended lower than where I began. So now you've seen what can happen if you're too aggressive. Let's see what can happen if you're too conservative. All right, so with our aggressive bankroll management, we were using a Kelly multiplier of 2.5. Again, I haven't introduced Kelly multipliers, so I don't expect you guys to know what I'm talking about, but all you need to know is that's around 10 times riskier than what most professional sports bettors use. So we're gonna to go to the other end of the spectrum. Let's be 10 times more conservative than what most sports bettors would do. We'll be using a Kelly multiplier here of 0 0.025. Again, we'll get to it a little bit later, but I'm gonna run the simulation here. I'll leave it running in the background really quick for you guys to see, and we'll see how the results go. All right, so we just wrapped up our conservative betting simulation and you guys can see, unlike the aggressive betting simulation, we actually did turn a profit, which makes sense. We're taking mathematically profitable bets. However, it's a relatively insignificant profit. I started with $25, I ended just under $28. It's a return of about 12%, which is not bad, especially when you put it in context with the stock market returning around 10% per year. But still, we're missing out on profit potential here. We saw that there's a lot of profit potential when you're betting on a positive EV coin, right? We got up to $2,000, the aggressive betting simulation, crashed right back down. But we see there's a lot of money to be made, and here we walk away with less than $3. So we know there's definitely something we can do better. So now let's talk about Kelly Criterion, what we've been building up to this whole time. All right, so we're finally here. Let's look at what the formula for Kelly Criterion says. First, let's talk about the things that Kelly Criterion considers. Obviously, like we've been leading up to, Kelly Criterion considers the expected value or how mathematically good your bet is. But Kelly Criterion also considers how risky your bet is. Bets that are less likely to hit, you're gonna wanna risk less money on. Bets that are really safe, you can put more money on because they're more likely to hit. So the way that Kelly Criterion does this is it considers your expected value by multiplying by it and it divides by your payout. So bets that have really big payouts, like big parlays, even if they're high EV, you're gonna risk less money on them just because they're riskier plays. So the full formula for Kelly Criterion says that the number of units, you, you wanna risk on a particular bet is 100 times your Kelly multiplier times your expected value divided by your payout. This 100 term is effectively just converting from a decimal to a percentage. This K is a Kelly multiplier that sports bettors use to adjust how risky they wanna be. Your EV is obviously your expected value, and then your P is your payout. So if it's a plus 800, you'd set P to be eight. If it's minus 200, that's $2 to win $1. So you'd set P to be 0.5. Here, let's look at a bet with 5% EV. We're gonna set our Kelly multiplier to 0.25, and we'll set the payout to one, which means it's plus 100. In this particular case, we wanna risk 1.25 units on this bet. Now we can change this. So let's do a 3% EV play. That's a little bit safer. So we'll put it at minus 200. 
you can see we want to risk more on this. We want to risk 1.5 units on this as opposed to 1.25 on the previous one. The reason for that is because this is a safer play. It's minus 200 as opposed to plus 100. So even though it's not as good mathematical value, the EV is lower, you still want to risk more money on this because it's a safer play. So about this Kelly multiplier, the mathematically optimal Kelly multiplier to use is actually one. However, this leads to a lot of fluctuations. One is quite risky. So even though technically, mathematically, it is the optimal way to play, most sports bettors are afraid of losing their money and instead play safer, often at 0.5 or 0.25. And I personally recommend this. If you are playing with Kelly of one, while mathematically it is technically the correct strategy, you're gonna see a lot of ups and downs. So stick with 0.25 or 0.5 if you're trying to be a little bit riskier. So that's everything about Kelly Criterion, the actual equation itself. Now we're gonna test it out to see how it does. We'll compare it to the conservative strategy and the aggressive strategy to see which one performs the best. All right, so now that you understand how to use Kelly Criterion to identify the mathematically optimal amount of money to risk on a sports bet, let's apply it to the simulation that we've been working with. So as we found out earlier, the expected value of a coin flip that's weighted 60% in your favor is simply 20%. So we'll set our EV here to 0.2. The payout is one to one. So we're gonna set the payout to one. And we'll set our Kelly multiplier to 0.5 in this case, because 0.25 is pretty conservative and it's often used for sports betting. Um, but since this is a relatively risk-free situation, uh, we'll go sort of in the middle between the safer 0.25 and the riskier mathematically optimal one, and just call it 0.5. So we can see here that the number of units that we should risk on each of our coin flips is 10 units. That makes sense. You guys know a 10 unit play in sports betting would be an absolutely massive play, um, but you're also not getting 20% EV very frequently in sports betting. So it makes sense that we'd be risking a lot of our bankroll on each individual coin flip. So I'm gonna go through the simulation, risking 10 units on every single coin flip, and I'll update you guys at the end with how my profits go. All right, so we have just wrapped up our 0.5 Kelly simulation, where we're trying to strike here a balance between being aggressive and being conservative. And based on our results, it seems like we've done pretty well in striking that balance. We turned $25 into over $215, so we nearly 10 times our money in just 10 minutes. And that's the power of Kelly Criterion. By effectively managing your bankroll and using Kelly Criterion, you're able to both maximize your profit and to minimize your risk. Uh, here, I don't think I ever saw my balance dip below maybe $22. So I barely went below what I started with and I went as high as 250. Um, so there's a very good balance here between risk and reward, which is exactly what Kelly Criterion seeks to strike. So I hope you guys can see um, I'm being entirely transparent when I say I've only done one simulation for each different betting style. Um, on everything I love, I've only done one simulation and these have been the exact results. I even included the videos just so you guys can check me, make sure I'm not playing any fancy tricks on you. This is really just math, I promise you. So I hope these simulations have helped you guys to sort of develop an understanding of why Kelly Criterion are such a helpful strategy to use when managing your bankroll and why you probably want to shoot for 0.25 or 0.5 to be your Kelly multiplier because other higher or lower numbers are just ineffective. So that's the, the basic gist of Kelly Criterion. And now uh, I want to talk a little bit briefly about the other step of betting. So we've now covered basically everything you need to know about how much you should be risking on each bet. But I do want to briefly touch on what type of bets you should be taking. So I'm going to hop over to Odds Jam so we can talk about that real quick. All right, so now that we've talked about how much money you should be risking on profitable plays, let's talk about where to find the profitable plays. I highly recommend the Odds Jam Positive EV screen. On the Odds Jam Positive EV screen, you have to do almost no work. The screen does all of the work for you. It finds the profitable bets by scanning the market and looking for discrepancies. It tells you the profitable bets in green, it tells you how profitable they are on the left as a percent, and then it even recommends a bet size using Kelly Criterion. You can set your Kelly Criterion settings when you go to Profile, Bankroll Settings, you tell it how big your bankroll is and what you want your Kelly multiplier to be, and it will do all of the calculations for you. You can see my bankroll is around $5,000, so I'm a relatively smaller bankroll better, 
which is why I'm slightly more aggressive with my Kelly multiplier, setting it to 0.5 instead of 0.25. As my bankroll increases in size, I plan to decrease that Kelly multiplier to be a slightly more conservative player. But with the Ajian Positive EV screen, there is almost no work for you to do. All you have to do is load up the screen. It will tell you what bets to place and how much to put on them in order to ensure you are taking the most mathematically profitable bets that you could be taking. If you have any questions about Kelly Criterion, uh, bankroll management, or Odd Jam in general, please feel free to drop a comment and I'd love to interact with you guys. I really hope you learned a lot from this video. I really look forward to talking to you guys again soon about sports betting concepts. Uh, and I appreciate you guys for sticking around. Thanks.